Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about classifying numeric data. Now, this isn't a particularly long um, set of slides, but it's a very important set of slides. When we classify data, uh, we have pretty much these six sort of uh, standard options. The Jenks natural break, defined interval, geometric interval, equal interval, quantile, and standard deviations. And these techniques apply to both vector and raster maps. You can have different classification methods available. Uh, the choice impacts the map appearance and the validity of your map. And the best method depends upon a lot of things like the distribution of your data and the objective of your map. So we'll talk a little bit about these and hopefully help you understand how each of them work. That's something you're almost always tested on. And which ones you should use and not use. Normal distribution, most things in the middle, near the mean, skewed, shifted one way or the other, uniform, not a lot of variability. Bimodal means you sort of got these two high points. So that's sort of the common distributions that you see. So let's first talk about Jinx natural breaks. Uh, Jinx natural breaks exploits natural gaps in the data. It's good for unevenly distributed or skewed data. It is the default and it typically works well for most data sets. Now, um, I'm going to tell you how, how it works. It looks at the distribution of your data and you tell it how many classes you want and it divides the data up in those classes and then within each class it calculates the standard deviation okay then it averages the standard deviation across all the classes to get an average standard deviation okay now imagine storing that number somewhere now move the boundaries between all the classes again and do the same process again to calculate the average standard deviation now do that forever until you've done all possible combinations. Okay? One of those possible combinations will have the lowest average standard deviation. That's what Jinx natural breaks does. So what does that actually mean though? Well, when you do this, it means that within each class the data is more like the other data in the class it's as much like the other data in the class as possible and as different from the other data outside of the class as possible. In other words, it is a naturally defined group of these are the things that are most alike and most different from everything else. And so the classes are different sizes. They have different numbers of features or objects or entries in them but ultimately it makes sense. You pick the number of classes it fits the data to it. Equal interval has a defined spacing. For example, um, you got five classes, you got how much ever value, it divides all your data up into five equal classes. So when you look at equal interval just think equal size classes works best for uniformed, uh, uniformly distributed data. Well, most everything works on uniformly distributed data. Defined interval. Defined interval is when you pick a class size, like a thousand, and then you end up with how many ever classes that lends to. Um, works best for uniformly distributed data. Why would you use something like this? Um, look, if you're looking at income data, and you know that tax brackets follow very distinct intervals, and so you could in theory set an interval size that would cause your data to line up with income tax information. Quantiles. Quantiles is another sort of statistical measure. Uh, quantiles make it so that you have the same number of features in each class. In other words, the classes in terms of count are the same sizes. Now they're not going to be evenly spaced. The ranges are going to be different the values, in other words, when I'm talking about the range from the lowest to the highest um, within the class, that's going to be wildly different. 
the easiest way to think of this is if you start with your lowest value up to your highest value and say you have a hundred data points and if you do a five class quantile then if you divide a hundred by five you get twenty that means the first twenty the lowest twenty data points are in quantile one the next 20 are in quantile 2, the next 20 are quantile 3, the next 20 are quantile 4, and the last 20 are in quantile 5. Same number, and it just follows the distribution. Now, um, that could mean that 90% of your data is going to be in just one of those quantiles in terms of the value, not the count. So the first might go from 0 to 5. The second one might go from 5 to 10. The third might go from 10 all the way up to 80. 4 could go from 80 to 90. 5 could go from 90 to 100. So in terms of the range, it would look huge. But it still has the same number of points or counts or features in that category as the others. So, same number of features in each class. You can get unevenly spaced class ranges. Uh, the results depend on the data distribution. Geometric interval multiplies each succeeding class boundary by a constant, and it works well for normal and skewed distributions. It's essentially a mathematic calculation that evaluates and determines the class sizes. Standard deviation. Uh, shows the deviation from the mean and you pick the units it assumes that your data is normally distributed it's usually not uh, and then it tries to fit that 